So hi guys, welcome here in the empty quarter. Uh, before we're going to pack up camp, I thought I'd just share with you all the stuff I brought with me. I've been here for the last seven days, doing some personal work, did a bit of writing, lots of biking, lots of running. So, uh, and I'm sure there'll be lots of gear guys out there very curious to see what it takes to bring with you when you spend a whole week in the desert. I chose to set up camp with two tents. We've got a big tent here, which is the Marmot Capstone 6 which normally sleeps six people. I've used it as a uh, base camp tent with the food in there, the cool box, and lots of other stuff. And I got a smaller tent as well, which is used only for sleeping. So uh, let's have a look inside. So the only way to keep stuff cool in the desert is by using a cool box. And I brought the, the Yeti along, and I'm super happy with the cool box. I kept ice here on day five. And even now, uh, day seven, I'm pulling really cold drinks out of it. So it's really been an amazing kit to use in the desert. This is where I stored all my food. Um, this is where I ordered all the fresh stuff. I used a lot of uh, pineapples, oranges, um, apples, avocados. Uh, these, yeah, these kind of fruits and vegetables, they hold it on for quite long. Uh, so it's great to, to have that healthy food. Got all my dry food in there. Lots of rice and pasta, milk. Uh, I've noticed that I've not done as much eating as I thought. I had dates, you know, you never know when you get unexpected. They do guest. Dates always work well in terms of hospitality. This is where I kept all my clothes. Um, I'm a big fan of Marmot gear, uh, especially the technical tops. It's great when you go out running and cycling. Keeps you nice and dry. Uh, and in the evenings, it's got nice and chilly. Uh, I still managed to wear my uh, down vest. Uh, proved to be a really nice piece of kit to have. Uh, not too warm, not too cold, just a perfect fit for the desert. Side of my running shoes, um, works really well. I've had them for years. Uh, just a really nice running shoe, especially when it's off-road. My first aid kit, uh, I've not used it. Um, on the topic of first aid and probably emergency as well, is I had a doctor on standby, uh, Dr. Mike who is uh, specialized in desert medicine. So in case something would happen, especially if it comes to creepy crawlers and other things, I'll be able to give him a call. I'm going to talk about it through iPhone a bit later, but I had a satellite phone as well, so I was always able to, to give a call if it was needed. So this is most of my adventure gear. Uh, this is my running pack and my cycling pack. It's an old Golight bag I had for many years. Um, it's got a three liter camel bag bladder in there. Um, which you know you can't take enough water out with you once you're out in the desert and in the front you probably find a spare head torch a bit of first aid and an additional small uh, gps tracker as well just in case you can't make it back to camp and find some navigation inside here bigger bag which is you know i'll have most of my running and cycling kit obviously got a helmet spare tubes toolkit uh, this is all my um, uh, sports nutrition you know, nice recovery, right? We come back from a long exercise, uh, hydration tablets, and some energy gels. Uh, you just got to stay fueled once you're out there doing lots of exercise. Nothing beats a little shower. Uh, Ostfield makes these nice little shower bags. Uh, you know, been out running, and then you know, you've got a nice shower when you come back trying to get a bit of dust off. Had a couple of showers. Obviously, you've got to be a bit careful with water. Uh, short showers, but it's nice and refreshing. I had one of these, it's made for diesel, I've just used it for water. That was all my spare water for washing and a bit of showering. So we used the bigger tent for day-to-day -day living and I had a nice small tent which I used for sleeping. Uh, why did I have two separate tents? It was mainly because I can keep the small tent, the Limelight 2, nice and closed the whole time so I didn't have to worry about creepy crawlers and all that kind of stuff. So inside the um, tent you would find a firmerest mat uh, you know, if, you, if you're out camping for that long, you've got to make sure you get a nice comfortable mat. Granted, it might be a bit of investment, but you know, it definitely um, turns a rough night into a very comfortable night. And then you find a really nice down sleeping bag, a marmot sleeping bag in there as well. Another nice thing about this tent is you can actually take the shell off, which I did a couple of nights when it was quite warm, and then you're just sleeping in a nice mesh open tent. So it's a really nice way of staying cool at night. Behind here, you would find a nice windbreaker which you happen to pick up at some kind of Bedou falcon farm. The guys are selling them there and it looks nice and peaceful here, uh, but it's been handy pretty much most days when the wind picks up in the afternoon. It gets really windy here, it just breaks the first 
flow of wind and makes these tents a bit more stable. Um, the tents are very stable anyway. I think this one blew away on day two, but it was more because it didn't anchor it down properly. Uh, but they've really performed well in, in a desert storm and and uh, in the really rough weather we had. I've only anchored it down with one part of my uh, snow shovel. The other part is just up there. Uh, the snow shovel I've had for years uh, and has come in for lots of different uses uh, and it's always going to have a shovel on standby. So in camp you find two tables. I've got the small one here which must be one of my first purchases in the UE. Uh, it's a bit wobbly but I keep on taking it with me and I've used it for a million things. Um, you find all the cooking. I'm a big Primus fan but it's because basically one of my friends used to work for Primus so I brought lots of them along. I cooked on gas so I've gone through about three of these in about a week. Uh, so all the, the teas, the coffee and then all the dinners were all cooked on here. The Stanley flasks, uh, before Adventure Q was selling them we're getting them in from Europe. It's a really nice brand, heavy duty. And if you have time, you actually get to go and visit their website because they've got all these customer credentials, which are a bit funny, but really nice read. Inside here, you have my hand espresso. Yeah, there's an art about making really nice coffee in the desert. So um, I keep it here nicely stored. Um, yeah, cutlery box, knives. Uh, so that's basically my cooking table and I do all my washing up. You need to have a nice comfy chair and camp. And there's a lot of time spent reading books, relaxing, all that kind of stuff. So a comfy, comfy tent is really important. Brings us to this table. So it brings me to my second table, which one is a bigger table, more sturdier, and used it for most of the, the reading and the dinner and the writing work. So here I've basically got all my uh, camera and video stuff. Man photo tripod, hopefully for the stills and the time lapses. Inside here, one of the F-stop ICU units, you'd find uh, lots of little stuff. I had a few uh, GoPros with me, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus, and a new one, the Hero 4, uh, some time controller, obviously the housing. Inside here, you'd find my Ferrari phone, um, yeah, just uh, for emergency calls. Lots of cables, got an old iPhone in here, which has got no SIM card, but obviously it works really well with the um, GoPro app. Get a little bit of speakers, lots of cables. Inside here, you've got the new Legria Mini X, uh, which is really nice for self filming, I find, because it's got this little fold out screen. You can hold it, you can film, and you can see yourself at the same time. So, a really useful camera piece. They got another little bag, it's got all the little GoPro um, tools and toys, got extra housing. This out here, selfie stick, it's got a suction mount in there, it's got a chest harness and a head harness, how do you call that? Head strap? Head strap you call that. So head strap and it's amazing how many little bits and bolts, but it's all in one bag, so it's all handy all together. So if I need it, it's quite easy to find. Um, then here you've got the new F-stop bag, um, which has all my camera equipment in it. I really went in quite light. Uh, so you'd find one body and four lenses, 16-35, 24-70, 70-200 and I bought a fisheye as well, uh, which sometimes works out really nice. Lots of spare batteries. I only brought one body with me, which is the Canon 1DX, because uh, I knew I was going to do a little bit of landscape photography. You can't miss it when you're out here in the beautiful dunes. Inside here you'll find two slots for uh, memory cards, CF cards. I'm a big fan of SanDisk. Uh, so two cards, I bought two big ones. Uh, I didn't bring any card readers or anything because I didn't want to spend much time downloading cards. So that's my camera bag. It zips up nicely and ready to hit the hills. So you know when you go into a trip that's going to be about a week um, in a desert. And what I imagined myself was, you know, if I would have been on a tropical island, the one thing you'd be doing is, you know, you get a nice hammock between two trees and spend lots of quality time reading a book. And the desert is going to be really hard to find a tree. So, uh, so I spoke to my friends at Fat Boy saying, this is what I'm going to do for a week. Can I borrow one of your hammocks? And the first thing they said, yeah, here, go and take one. So the Fat Boy hammock has been a real added value to the trip. I think I managed to take it out on day four after the sandstorm had left. Managed to get the canopy up and it's just been absolutely magic. Reading books, nice and chill, little snooze, the stuff you would do in a hammock. So one piece of kit I can't miss out on is the, uh, the fat bike, the Shirley's. 
Uh, first time I've rode him, first time I rode him into the desert as well. And uh, it's been an absolute delight. Nice big fat wheels uh, and cruising around here and the, the big sand has been really epic. The way I, how I summarized it was um, it's like a ski mountaineering in the French Alps, just fat biking here in the M2 quarter. It's the big dunes, you know, it's long climbs up, lots of cycling, but you know, the epic feel when you sort of go down at speed and navigation, the quick turns has just been absolutely fantastic. So, uh, so the bike has been a great asset to, uh, to the week out here. Last bit of uh, kit I want to talk about is the uh, Sunto, the Ambition 3. Uh, what I specifically want to talk about a watch. It was uh, two things. Obviously, you can measure all your individual exercises, being the runs or the bikes or, or all the sports you do. And specifically for me, it's got the GPS functionality. So, uh, so I could store base camp here, go for a long run or a bike ride, and then use my GPS tracking system in my watch to find camp back. And that for me was something really important is you know, coming back here. You know, it's a big wilderness, a big wild place, and to get lost here by yourself. Uh, it's not a good place to be in. So the GPS tracking for me was a good uh, peace of mind uh, just to sort of go out and play. So here you have it. It's been an amazing week in the desert. Um, you know, I set off to spend a week in solitude, off the grid, no Wi-Fi, no phones, no email, no nothing. And uh, you know, it's an experience I've really, really enjoyed. Uh, I would encourage everyone to do once in a while. Being here in the empty quarter, uh, or go to a place that fits you. You know, everyone has their own sort of environment or get really creative in, really relaxed in, really at peace. And um, yeah, I look back at an amazing week and I would encourage everyone to once in a while go and have the same experience.